So was you fucking around with um comedy and shit then? No. But you knew you wanted to do it though. I didn't, no. Oh. I just knew I was bad at school and I had no identity. I was like, if you're bad at school when you're 20, it's like you're an idiot. You have nothing else going on. So when did you first like, fuck it, I'm going to get on stage, man. I'm gonna try Listening to, to Joe Rogan's podcast. Really? Yeah. Damn. I was like, damn, he makes it sound like a meritocracy. I don't have anything I want to do. I suck at school. What what could I do with my life? And I was like, let me follow Joe Rogan's advice. Start doing Brazilian. You're like, these motherfuckers can do it. I know I can. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks easy. It just looks like you're talking. Fuck no, it don't look easy. But yeah, man, that's crazy. So you didn't, so how many years ago was that? That was 10 years ago. Oh, okay. I so was 22. You still put a lot of work in, though. Yeah. You know, it ain't like it happened overnight for you and shit. Yeah. For your ass to be like, fuck it, I'm going to go to Austin and try to get on Kill Tony and shit. Yeah, it was five years in Seattle, three years living in New York in a van, and then I came to Austin after doing comedy for eight years. So you was doing open mics and shit in, in Seattle? All the open mics. I did like... Are you originally from Seattle? I was moved there when I was seven, and oh. I lived there forever. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's much. a lot of Asians in Seattle. Yeah, we're close. Yeah, every time I'm in the Seattle airport, I just see a <laughs> shit ton of them, man. Like, you know, so you did eight years in Seattle? Five years. Oh, Three years in New York City. So you went to New York just to do comedy? Yeah. And got mm. nowhere. Nobody liked me. Because New York is, um, they got, it's, it's a different brand of comedy there, too. Like, yeah. I feel like they on some straight gangster shit, to be honest. <laughs> it's like they hate everybody, hate everything, kind of, they just got a whole different style of how they do shit, man, out there, man. Yeah. It's like NPR. If you listen to NPR, I think you'd do well in New York. Really? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess you would know better than me, man. But yeah, so you lived in your fucking vans, fucking stanking, smelling like ramen and shit. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why they ain't like your ass. They're like, this motherfucker coming in this bitch boofing. <laughs> Nigga smell like sweet sauce. I'm always sauce. boofing. <laughs> I don't realize how I'm smelling. Yeah, that's probably what it was, man. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, they wasn't mad at your comedy, man. It was you living in that goddamn van. <laughs> I hope and so. So what was the moment? I mean, what was the like moment where you were like, fuck that, I'm about to go to Austin? When the pandemic hit, I was like, people are dying in New York. This is right when it hit, when New York was fucking crazy. I had to have a hospital boat come in. I was like, I'm not going back there. Mm -hmm. So I went to Seattle, lived with my family, lived in LA for a bit near Pan Pacific Park. And then I moved to Yuma, camped out with my friend who happened to be a woman who did not have sex with me for th th three months. And then I moved out here to Austin. Camped out? What you mean y'all lived in a tent? I lived in a little van and she lived in a casita. That ain't camping. That's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I was homeless with her. You just was like, <laughs> you just was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to be homeless. This shit going to work. Yeah, this shit gotta work. You, that's what I'm saying. You a brave motherfucker, man. I couldn't do that shit. I'll be like, yeah, nah. It man. was a great exercise in Buddhism. Like, how do I deal with less? Yeah, and I just trusted the human spirit. I think people are amazing, and I'm a person, so I can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you bet on yourself. Yeah, you just really was like, fuck it, this shit don't work. I'm just gonna be a homeless <laughs> motherfucker in a van. You know what I'm saying? You bet. You put it all on the line, man, and it worked out for you, man. So you should be proud of yourself, man. Thank you, Danny. Because that living, you you was doing van life for real. Yeah. Like and that shit. That fuck. So where was you showering at? You was going to like Planet Fitness and yeah. some shit. I get one week trial free passes for each club in New York. There's like 700 of them. So how was you feeding yourself? Like, tell me I about got this. food you, stamps, 200 oh, bucks a week. You was, what the fuck? It was a lot of money. Why they giving you 200? You ain't got no kids. That's what food stamps <laughs> supposed to be for the kids. Uh, I'm a child at heart. You was finessing the system? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. What I was mean, the fuck you doing, man? I was finessing the system by being honest and filling out the form and being like, I'm homeless. And then they gave me a lot of money. And I was like, hey, that's great. You know, I'll pay this back forward. That's why we got a migrant problem now. <laughs> shit like that. You give a motherfucker cell phones and shit. I seen that shit. You seen that video? He's uh, whooping that police officer ass uh, yeah. in New York. Yeah. He was like, that's my niggas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. What you listen to when you said? Oh, I asked you that already, didn't I? Yeah. See, you got me. I'm cuz at the end of the day, man, you got me all uh, I'm I'm gotta collect my marbles, man, listening to your homeless story, man. I'm, I'm kinda feel, it's like I'm so proud of you, but I feel sorry, sorry for your ass, man. It's like this Why? motherfucker was cause you was living off food stamps. 
Yeah. Sleeping in a van. That was the life. Showering at fucking planet. And he talking about this is the life. I don't know if I would, I would have, man, I would have jumped off a bridge. Or something. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to make it, man. That's, um, that's really hard. And then you're putting it on the line for comedy, which is like, it's, it's not many motherfuckers make a lot of money doing comedy, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, shit has changed. You know, motherfuckers is getting money now, but you just didn't know, man. That's like, I mean, I guess in some sense, you know, I, I just, with me and music, I just was like, I don't know. I, I was like doing a lot of couch surfing. I wasn't sleeping in no vans, though, man. <laughs> that was just, that was out, man. Well, in some way, vans are better because, you know, I had privacy. You're jacking off in the van. I was, that's what I was going to bring up. Without headphones. Nasty motherfucker, man. Your ass could have went to jail. <laughs> doing that I didn't shit, think man. about that. That shit is fucked up, man. That's well, I did it a lot. You'd have been like a um, fucking. Uh, they'd have put your ass on that list. You'd have been <laughs> got to stay fucking. Uh, you can't be by no schools. None of that shit, man. You were a fucking predator, fucking jacking off in a van. So then now you got this jizz van. Well, do you want a guy in a van not jerking off, just holding it in, trying to explode everywhere? Or would you rather have him be wall come? Yeah, that's how I turn to that white van, asking kids do they want lollipops and shit, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you double down, you made it, man. So you should you should feel great, man. But 